No. No, don't ever do that again. Ever. Well, I thought it was good. Yeah, I bet you did. But comment below. How did we get from this to this? And how did we get from that to this to this? I don't know. I don't know. But we are evolution, folks. Yeah, the evolution. Evolution. The evolution. Evolution of cartridge. See what we do for you? Just to get a point across. Yeah. Sometimes just to dance our asses off. Sometimes just to look like damn fools. Yeah. But before we even touch upon this. Let's touch upon something else. Let's touch upon this. Let's Some touch. of you may recognize this. This, my friends. Is a jackass. <laughs> is our very special weekly splash. Vintage splash. Tie wins, everybody. Splash of the day. Now this, uh, this is really, this is one of Avon's coolest aftershave, just, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a decanter, though it is, but it has this little spiral, or a little spinner on top. You the, spin it, this little sleeping guy. The little, the word gimmick comes to my mind. Go fishing. Yeah, but it's so cool, you know, it'll get whatever, you, it's a weekend decider. It decides for you what you're gonna Wash do. the car. Wash the car, you know, so it's not always gonna be something you're gonna wanna do. So your wife would be like, honey, what are you gonna do this weekend? And you're like, I'm gonna go to the ball game. <laughs> The board game. And how, how can she really argue with it if no, the aftershave wasn't told you, you to do yeah, it? Is, is, listen, I didn't pick this. Listen to the aftershave. Yeah. But not only that is... Let's smell the aftershave. This is Ty Wins, and I think this is one of Avon's best or better aftershaves out there. This is classic. And I know I say this a lot, but classic barbershop in the same vein. You say it every time with every aftershave. That's what used to call me high school. <laughs> Anyways, they, it's it's in the same vein as I think Club Gun. Well, yeah, think? it smells You're like Club No, it's nice. It's it's spicy. It's floral, but it does smell a lot like Club powdery, powdery, lavender, yeah. bergamot, vanilla, musk, and tonka. It's really. I actually I'm gonna splash them on too. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no, it's good stuff. We'll we'll see how it performs throughout our discussion. Ooh, so yeah, this very Clubman. Very. If you guys get a chance, if you do see this online. Uh, Pick it up. It's really, it's just, it's something cool to have in the collection. It's fun for the whole family. Fun for the whole family. It's got that game of life. You know that, the, the game life? Yeah. The board game? It's got, or mousetrap? It almost reminds me of cartridge razors, which is actually the topic of today's video. So, you know, we want to, we, we, people are so excited to get into double edge razors. They're so pumped. What did you just say? People are so excited to get into double edge razors. Oh, double edge. I think it's blood razors. Yeah, blood razors, the crypts, the bloods, you know. <laughs> wow. That's weird. Um, so, you know, you, you got your double-edged razor and you're like, wow, this is the way it was, you know, used to be. How did we how did we get to this crap today? Blah, 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 blah. Well, <laughs> you know, there's something to be said about that. And we're gonna teach you today how we got from, you know, this to the blah, blah, blah crap. So it all- Matt's had like eight cups of coffee, by the way. One, maybe, not even, hardly. I'm just coming up with excuses. Yeah, so the transitional razor is right here. This is like the hybrid razor that gets us from this to this. And it kind of does look like a hybrid razor. It it's certainly Like does. most of it's plastic, actually. So this is a Gillette Techmatic. And this came out in 1965. And it featured for the very first time Gillette's uh, kind of age-old uh, goal of trying to get you to have to use their blades. Because it was always a blade game. And anyone who tells you it was not a blade game that they loved making razor handles like the President or Aristocrat or Double Ring is kidding you. Those products were always a loss leading, you know, product that, that the Gillette had had to produce and then create salesmen and, and catalogs and brochures and ads when really they wanted to sell you this the entire time, a double-edged razor blade. This was it. But if you know anything about patent laws, you can't keep on patenting something unless you change it. And change it they tried. I mean you you they, they put They lost the patent in like the twenties. Yeah. Early twenties. So I mean they, that's when a lot of people are just getting in, you know? Yeah. So. so you have all these other companies that are making razor blades and not having to have the overhead of, of all the you know machining tools to make handles. And uh, before you know it, they're trying to do different things. Now they're doing stainless steel. Now they're doing Teflon coating, thinner, you know, platinum coating. And, and, and you just can't keep on getting awarded a patent every, every couple of years. So yeah. they set everyone back uh, with this little device right here. And this was their technology. And it also kind of 
showed people that the handle now really didn't have much of the technology. It was really going to be the cartridge. And that's certainly, that is packed. That must have been expensive to make, actually. Yeah. There's a lot going on, aside from the plastic, that is. But I mean, there's a lot going on here. This is, it, I get almost a Spaceman vibe from it. Well, it was featured in the Apollo missions in space. Well, it makes sense. I mean, it's self-contained. Everything you need is right there. It's not going to have a blade worry. Yeah, you don't flying have to worry around. About, and you don't have to worry about the blades. Yeah, exactly. Flying around or putting them in. Like, it's a, it's on a ribbon. Yeah. Like a tape recorder. It's like a tape recorder. It's a band of steel. And as you wind this little lever right here, it keeps on basically advancing the band. And you can get a number right. of shaves out of it. And it actually have a little counter on the back that counted, you know, how many shaves you were at. So you could see what number you were and, on. And then never even went back to that technology. That's pretty cool. I think that is pretty neat. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, if we could figure out that. Like a, no, I'm serious. Like on a, a, well, because people always ask how many shaves can they but get But a dial, this? you know, just like you have an adjustable with the numbers right there, you could actually have a dial hmm. and count shit. Yeah. I just go to it feels like it's polling. I'm like, it's polling garbage. Look for it stores this holiday season. But, um, and there's also a date code on this too, right? They were date yes. coded? Yes, yeah, the, the handles were, were date coded, so they fall So they line. thought they were gonna do yeah. a lot of these. They thought this was the future, maybe. It was gone though in just a few years. It yeah. didn't do as well as they thought, but it, what it did do is it was a seed for the future. And it showed them that, you know, of this entire band, you know, only that cutting edge was so small. And you look at the amount of steel here, you know, here's your big double-edged blade, here's your band of, of steel, and it started the, the wheels turning or the, the ribbons turning in Ooh, their mind. I like what you did there. And so they started saying, well, what if we took this little tiny you know ribbon or this little foil of, of, of steel and we held it in a different kind of piece of plastic? And that's how you really get to something eventually like this, uh, where you just have a small piece of steel held in a piece of plastic and that's really all they're now selling to you. Uh, but along the way, there's many other milestones. So this is still a one blade system. Uh, a few years later, uh, Gillette was uh, rivaled by, was it Wilkinson Sword in 1970? They were the first to release a cartridge razor. The bonded uh, shaving system. Yeah. So that came out, and so Wilkinson Sword is also uh, synonymous with Schick, and uh, they came out with that. They Several times, Wilkinson Sword beat Gillette to the punch. So also um, in the 50s. Supposedly they had spies inside the, the labs. Yeah, no, I read that too. Yeah. He read it also. Yes. We read. We read. Feed your head. I go to the library. Uh, <laughs> Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? Conan the Librarian. Uh, right on the, the heels of, of the uh, Wilkinson Sword Bonded System was the track two. The track two from Gillette. 1971. Yeah, and you know what what that stand? I think we covered this in another episode. What does track stand for? We covered this. We covered it in a few episodes. I know. I just I love trivia. What is track? What does TRAC stand for, Matt? The test razor for the Australian cartridge? Test razor, Australian cartridge, something like that. I thought you knew this. I'm pretty sure it's it. We'll have it on the screen right here. You mean right here? Yes, of what it actually means. I think it's pretty close to that. Um, so that also is a, you know, that now used a two blade system. And so you can see already the evolution going. So if you can't beat it with one blade, just add another blade. <laughs> it's true, it's true. And then we get to the Bic. Yes, so, you know, even the Track 2, if you see some of the handles for them, they're really fancy. They had like, you know, uh, platinum coated, uh, rhodium, uh, I don't know, rhodium gold plated, aluminum handles, like still really silver plated, you know, versions of them, like nice, nice, you know, handles. But Bic came to the table and was like, no, 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 no. No one needs that. Let's just give them disposable razors. And I think they just called it the Bic Disposable. I yeah. don't think it even had a model number, yeah. model name. Just tossed the whole thing out, and this was like around 1974. Yes. I believe it was Bic. Yes. Okay. Uh, Gillette came right on its heels, though, and came out with the good news, which this is more or less a good news. They call this a Sensor Plus, I believe, because it has the aloe strip, which is another thing you start seeing happening. What are your thoughts on the aloe strip? I don't, I don't think it's real. You don't think, well, I mean, it's real, it's right there, but do you believe it's not effective? I don't think it's effective. Okay. But I mean, I don't think it's real. <laughs> this is not an aloe strip you're looking at. There is no spoon. <laughs> that? Uh, but that was actually a way for Gillette in between patents with adding blades, if they couldn't add another blade, or if they had a plan for the future to add another blade, they could kind of do a half measure and add an aloe strip, a comfort strip, 
and now this was a way to get another few years out of a cartridge. Maybe, the, you know, what they should do is sandwich aloe strips in between the blades. So it's like blade, aloe, blade, aloe. aloe. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, you know, this is going to tear your Mine face. Mine has more aloe soothe than yours. Soothe it. Tear. Soothe. Yeah. I really, I, I highly, I, really? An aloe strip? How is that even working? We need to test this, man. I don't even know if it, well, how do you get aloe into a strip? Aloes come in plants. They don't even come in strips. That was dumb. I know. Moving along. So a few years later in, in 77, uh, Gillette- It doesn't even taste like aloe. Gillette comes out with the Atra, which is just another two bladed system. And that lasts them until, gosh, I think the 90s, was it? They, they really rode the- The Astra the, the train. Atra. Atra train. They came out with Sensor, which was again, just a, another updated version of the Atra. It's still that two bladed. That was 1990. Was it? Yeah. Okay, so Sensor comes out in 90. Cause I turned 18. Um, and I got one in the mail. That's how everyone got started with this stuff. It's like drugs, they get you addicted. It's yeah. like drugs, you fill the civil, civil service, next thing you know you turn 18 and you get a bag of crap. You get a bag of razors in the mail and you're like, I'm hooked, I just can't stop using yeah, these. And they knew it, they knew it. So uh, they didn't really push the, the envelope until uh, Mach 3, which I believe is 1998. Yes. Mach 3, now they've, you know, they've been pushing two blades. I thought you were about systems. to go like this. No. Okay. We're not worthy! We're not Two blade systems for like 20 years, and now all of a sudden it's like, no, three. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, whoa. And I remember now, see, Mach 3 was my era. Like, I was born in the 80s, um, and I remember it's like Mach 3 everywhere. And then I think they bought the rights for, is it Energizer? Gillette and Energizer, like, worked together, and then they came with Mach 3 Turbo. Oh, I don't remember, remember that. No. Yeah. Did it vibrate or something? Yes, it was a vibrating Mach 3. And again, we've covered vibrating razors. Yeah, and there's only know. one thing those look good for. Shaving. The trash. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, again, another way to kind of get a few more years out of a cartridge. And you gotta remember, every time they, they change the cartridge, they can now file a patent, and then they can tell all their competitors to go basically fly a kite for a few years. Conspiracy! Yeah. This brings us back, we need to hop back 20 years though. 1970, 71 with Gillette's first introducing the cartridge razor and trying to push the consumer into getting cartridge razors. They were actually dulling down their DE blades too. Mm. All the DE blades they were selling at that time, because they were, they also had what, uh, uh, ruby blades? Well, and from, what's the? Uh, yeah, no, uh, Nasset, um, they, had, they had several. Subsidiary uh, plants, well, what which I've, were their seconds for their blades. What I've read is that all the blades came from the same place. It was more or less as they did QC. They had like A grade, B grade, mm -hmm. C grade. So and so the B grades and C grades would be rubies or yeah, other branded sort. names. But even their A grades were no longer A grades. They were dulling them down to make people switch over to the cartridge razor. Hmm. So there's a little bit more cartridge conspiracy. That's a conspiracy theory. No, it's actually true though. That oh. really that is true. Um, and another true thing is they had patents for the next 10 or 15 years after 1970 so they could keep competing in this cartridge razor world. So they already had the patents stacked up and ready to go. Yeah. Granted, they had a head start on everyone when it comes to razors in well, general. So you I mean, gotta, but you got to imagine, if you're making, let's say you're like Don Juan blades or just another, you know, a razor. great blade. Yeah, another razor blade maker who doesn't make handles, and all of a sudden your competition stops doing this and all of a sudden does this, all of your tooling, all of your machining, all of your molds obsolete. are completely obsolete. Overnight. Yeah, and so uh, this is when Gillette went from being a multi-million dollar business to a billion with a B. One hundred billion dollars. I don't even know why I keep doing this. But yeah, you, yeah, I think you're like thinking you're in a gang or something. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you so you had the Mach three, Mach three turbo power, whatever, and then I think Fusion uh, came Schick. out. Schick, Schick, Schick with the Quattro. Out. Yeah, no three. O three with the Schick Quattro. So now it's not three. Well, and interesting enough, this is a Schick cartridge razor that I two. discovered. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a twin Schick, blade. A two. I think it was double. This is a. a uh, what is it? Ah, this is a, just a fake cartridge for it. It I looks a lot like a Track 2, honestly. You know, Colonel Conk actually sells something similar nowadays for a Track 2. Right. Same handle as this, but it fits it's a, like a track molded Zamek or something. I can't find this online. If any of you know what this Schick model is, I would love to know in the comments below. But yeah, I just wanted to thought I'd pull this out as another uh, example of earlier cartridge razors. But Schick, I think the Quattro was one of their big last like splashes. Yeah, I don't know if Schick even. I mean, I think they're still in the in the. Cartridge game. And that was four blades. That was four blades. And then Fusion came out in what, 2005? Six. 2006. 
with the with the five blades from July. I remember exactly where I was when the Fusion came out. I remember getting one in the mail. I was, you know, I was like, wow, okay. You got one in the mail? I did. Well, because in 2005, I was only 20. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I got one in the mail, and they are still riding the Fusion, and they have, just like the Mach 3, they've come out with a Fusion Power Glide and a Fusion Ball and other ways of taking the same cartridge and then getting a new patent by doing something funny with the handle or how it's held or whatever. Putting batteries inside. Yeah, and hey, I'm not I'm not knocking it. It's it's a it's a marketing campaign, marketing technique, and it works. It's effective and consumers buy into it. Heck, they have the little ads. Have you been at the like Target or Walmart and they have like a little active demo where they show like a bumpy face and they have the, the, the ball glide like going over the bumps like easily and then they show one without the ball and it's like ur, 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 No, ur. I've never seen that. They have it at, at Walmart. I saw it. I was like, you know, have you seen the Marissa? Yeah, I mean, it's it's out there. People love gimmicks and I'm not saying it doesn't work, but the idea of all of this is, is just a, a perception. I mean, you can get a great shave probably from really any of these. Um, a great shave? Well... A passable shave. Sure. Because I mean, you know, Back in the day, before cartridge razors existed, or even disposable razors, no one was talking about razor bumps or razor burn, or even the products. They didn't have products that dealt with that stuff because, guess what, they weren't caused by... Well, they weren't doing tug pull, tug pull. Yeah. That comes into play when you or introduce tug, these. Tug, tug, yeah. And then the six blade shows up. Yeah, Dorco recently... The Mayans actually predicted this one. <laughs> True. In 2012, six Dorco blades. released this massive six-blade cartridge. Yeah, it's like trying to fit a zip under your nose. And I'm just trying to remember how I used to shave with these things. Like, I didn't do multiple passes. I just lathered up and shaved one time. Well, whenever I've seen people use cartridges, they usually do a lot of... It's a lot of this. It's a lot of kind of blade buffing that. kind of thing and then shaking it out, then they get clogged. Yeah, and I remember running it under the sink and up. But well, like, then you have to run your finger like this. Yeah, 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 like, go like that. To get all the hairs out. And it doesn't really matter how much you try. They're never all out. You look at the back of and it. You, sometimes you get that little, yeah, the one that's stuck in it, it's pricking you. Coming through. Yeah, it's not good. It's kind of gross. good. But, and the thing is, because the cost of the cartridge razors, not those, those are, those are crap. But uh, the cartridge razors being as expensive as they are, you tend to overuse the blade when you should have chucked it oh, yeah. weeks ago sometimes. When I was in college, I'd use the same blade for like a month. Well, yeah. And the other big thing we hear is that customers have invested so much. They've gone to a big you know, box store like a Costco or a Sam's Club, and they've bought a mega pack of cartridges. And so now they can't, it's like a drug. They can't give it up because they got such a good deal on these expensive cartridges. I have to use up all of my fusions before I can try double edge. And that's another You're damaging your face, people. In fact, donate that or something like that. I think it's a trick they've done. It's like they've made them expensive so that you don't want to give them up. Well, as soon as you commit to something, you're committed. You yeah, like, you're so invested. It, be, be it you spend five, like a dollar, there's shave clubs out there that charge, they're cheaper. My, my whole point is, big deal, you're saving money. You're still damaging your face using inferior products. So why even go there? It's like eating fast food every day. Does it taste good? Yes. Is it really that great? No. Yes. That's true. <laughs> that's actually very good when it comes to cartridges. It is. It's a lot like fast food. Yeah. Let's talk about when people say that they have sensitive skin, but they've been using dull steel five, six, oh, seven blades yeah. of dull steel. Good well, point. Like, like, like Doug was saying, they, you do damage, and I think a lot of people have this perception that they have sensitive skin. And I know for me, that's why I started, you know, racing to find double-edged razors. Uh, I was just trying to find a better way to shave. And I was using uh, a Mach 3, and, it, and so I was like, well, that's not working. How about Mach 2 or, you know, sensor? And I was like, now, even that, let's just get to one blade. That's when I first heard about DE. Yeah, no, I've done some speaking engagements, and I usually begin where uh, I ask, you know, how many guys in the audience think they have sensitive skin? And, and everyone raises their nine hand. Nine out of ten raise their hand. And I, I'm like, you know, I'm here today to tell you, you actually don't. And people will actually argue with me that I do, and I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. You've just been giving it to yourself by using inferior products I, for such I, a long time. 100% agree. You hang on to the, these longer than you should. You should be tossing them out sooner after probably four shaves. So now you got this disease thing you've been using over and over again. It's shaving too close. Uh, it's causing the hair to grow under the skin, it becoming an ingrown. It's causing razor burn. It's causing all these issues that totally throw the balance, of your natural balance of your skin, out of whack. Plus, even the products you're putting on your face when you're using this. The propellants and everything else yeah. that are in the can is also strip. done. If, yeah, the, that's questionable aloe strip. Yeah. So chances are you don't. And even guys today that have made the switch still, and this is it's so burned in their brain, they still have sensitive skin. They will tell you, no, well, but I have sensitive skin. Though well, it's like, no, you got to erase that from your mind. You actually. But don't. what you need to do, <laughs> I, I even after switching to DE razors, 
it took me probably a good year or two to really dial in the right blade, the right products. And to shake it from your head that you and actually don't. Because guys will still argue, no, no, you don't understand. I do it. And it's like, trust me, you probably don't at this point. Just relax and then try it again. And yeah. like, uh, or a lot of it comes down to technique. I remember for. Well, it's just identity. Like, the, the identity is they have sensitive skin. They've been right. a guy with sensitive skin for the last. Like, victimhood status. Ten, no, it's not victimhood, but it's just like, it's an identity thing. But, like, guys, I'm here. I'm giving you permission yes. to think of yourself as normal. As normal. Yeah. I remember even for me with DEs, I had to learn how to like not put pressure on my right hand side. Like my right side of my neck would always have issues, my left side not. And I realized I'm like, well, I'm right handed. I'm literally just putting more pressure. It's not the razor, oh, that's it's not my prep. It's literally just my technique. So I do think that once you make the switch to DE, uh, you, you have a lot to unlearn. You, yeah, you have, to, you have to unlearn a lot, and but it, it is usually the path to finding a lot more variables because you do have a million options. You can you can take this awesome razor handle and you can throw in fifty different blades and get fifty different complete shaves. Yeah, you can, you can try can out finally customize soaps. the shave to yeah. your own unique. Whereas face. this, there's no customization. This is it's one size fits take all. Take it or leave it, and I like to leave it, and we are going to be showing you exactly Trick where to put shot. these things. Got it. 